morning, everybody. How you doing today? My name's Andrew. I'm Grandpa. I'm Aunt Becky. Hi, Kai. I'm Mimi. I'm Gavin. I'm Tracy. I'm Megan. And we're some of the Veggie Boys. Eggs. And we'd like to thank you for stopping by. If you're new here, please consider subscribing because we can grow a lot of stuff on the farm, but one thing we can't grow is this channel without your help. Welcome back, everyone. It's so nice to see you. Right away, we're getting started in the farm market. I just went through and got all the floor swept, so we're ready to pull stuff out of the cooler. And once we get stuff pulled out of the cooler and filled up, we'll be ready to open. Now, today is definitely gonna be a fun one. I mean, every day is a fun one, but we were informed that we are in a heat advisory. And we're gonna be in that heat advisory for the next couple days, which we haven't been dealing with too warm of temperatures, so that'll make work difficult. But we've worked in the heat before, so we won't get too worried about it. We'll just have to be careful and make sure we're drinking enough water. But for now, we need to finish getting this farm market all taken care of. We've now got everything pulled out of the cooler and dad's just gotten back from the wholesaler. Usually dad takes the truck with him to the wholesaler, but Matthew went to the auction today. He normally doesn't go today, but we've been trying to get better prices. So Matt went to the auction and dad used the van. So now we're just working on filling things up and putting all the orders together. So we just got through Labor Day, which was crazy for us. We were very, very busy the past couple days and it shows when you go into the cooler. So we're gonna have to restock the cooler with some vegetables. And half of the reason why we're gonna have to do that is because we have a lot of orders today which we're working on getting filled. I'm getting some tomato orders put together. We have some corn orders that the boys are putting together. And I think we need a few other things, but we'll have to get those picked. We got a lot of the orders put together that we needed to. We still are missing a few things, but that's to be expected. We will have to take care of that later on. But for now, we need to finish off our morning chores, which dad has already got started on. He's feeding calves, and I'm gonna help Daniel get the silage taken care of. Looks like everybody is enjoying the silage this morning. What's up, what's up? That's a busy feeder right there. We have plenty of feeder space. It just seems that the cattle think wherever the silage is dumped first, that stuff is the best. Good morning, ladies. After we got the silage dumped in, I came through with some grain and now have grain in every single feeder. So calves are done, the rest of the cattle are done, and they got the chickens finished off while I was doing that. So that should just about wrap up morning chores. We're on to our next job. Our next job involved grabbing some mums to take up to the farm market. We grabbed a few colors. We got some orange, pink, and this is the last thing we need, yellow. If you have not seen this greenhouse in a very long time, you can see that the mums look amazing, and we have a lot here to sell. Thankfully, we've been moving through them pretty quick. The customers have been happy with them. You know, something I'd just like to mention really quickly before we head up top, uh, all the work that we've been doing this time of year, and it's been a lot, all the picking, planting, taking care of the customers, uh, this time of the year, that's when it's really busy for that type of stuff. But something we do all year long is take care of what we call the chores. We have our animals that we take care of every day, that's feeding, you know, any other type of care that they need. We've got to keep their pens all bedded up. We need to make sure that everybody is nice and healthy. But that's the everyday jobs that we have on the farm. It almost doesn't feel like work just because we've been doing it for so long. It's just, it's just what we do every day. But I'll tell you what, when you have little guys like this one, yeah, then it's definitely not work. Look at that guy. He's hungry. Look at him. So on top of all the other work that we have, taking care of the animals, that's an everyday thing. If you have animals, you got work to do every day. We were just going over what we need to pick today, and a big thing is tomatoes. So we're putting a few stacks of baskets onto the side-by-side. -side. I don't know, Dad. How do you feel about picking tomatoes today? I don't like picking tomatoes when it's 95 degrees. Well, good thing it's not 95 degrees. It's only like 90 degrees. Oh, great. Let's go pick before it gets hot.
So we made a little bit of a change of plans on the way out here. We decided that we wanted to stop at the peppers first. Not only do we need tomatoes, but we also need some bell peppers. We had someone call this morning for an order, so we feel it's a good time to get it picked. So altogether, we need 10 baskets of bell peppers to get the order all taken care of. This is what we like to see. Gorgeous. These peppers are hidden under this plant. Couldn't even see it from the outside until I started looking around. Accidentally broke this plant, but at least we got all the peppers off of it. Well, I'm about to talk about something that I did not expect to be discussing this year, and it's a disease that our peppers are experiencing. Usually on the farm, we don't have any trouble with peppers. That always seems to be one of our best crops that we raise, but this year, well, we're having a big problem. Now the disease or the issue that we're facing is called Phytophthora. There may be another word for it, I might not be saying it right either, but we've always called it Phytophthora. Now what Phytophthora does is it causes your vegetables to start rotting even on the vine. Like you can see that has Phytophthora in it. And look, this beautiful pepper, this one has Phytophthora, and this one, Phytophthora. And you can see we went through a little patch of Phytophthora here that actually turned into a big patch. Now the interesting thing about Phytophthora is the spores are called swimming spores. So when you have waterlogged soil or standing water, Phytophthora then becomes an issue. Now these plants have all been infected with Phytophthora. Uh, some of them worse than others. You can see this pepper here has Phytophthora right here by the camera. Phytophthora. And the best way to fight Phytophthora is by rotating crops, which is what we do every year, and by preventing standing water, which we were unable to do this year. Now, hopefully things will dry out and our peppers will start to put on a new crop. But until then, everything that is on these plants, uh, they're facing the same issue. We will find a few sections here and there where the peppers do not have Phytophthora on them. But as you can see, it's almost like every pepper I grab has the Phytophthora. This one doesn't. This is a good one. Hey, look, this plant is pretty good. Yeah, well, that pepper down there has Phytophthora, but we got two. Now you can probably imagine, uh, we are all very upset about this because we love harvesting peppers and peppers are a big thing for us. The sweet banana peppers, the cubanel, and our bell peppers have been hit the hardest by Phytophthora. Thankfully, we've been able to harvest the other peppers without many issues, but we are starting to see problems creep into different varieties. And sadly, it seemed like this issue just popped up out of nowhere. Um, there's not much we can do about it. Uh, preventing the standing water would have been the best thing for us, but with all the rain that we received this year, that was basically impossible. And what's interesting is with Phytophthora, the spores can travel or they can activate in water or in soil that is very waterlogged, which I think all of our soil has been waterlogged for a bulk of July into August. And now we're starting to see the effects of that uh, being Phytophthora in a lot of these plants. I was hoping once we got to the areas where the soil drained a little bit better that we wouldn't be facing this problem but it seems like this is just everywhere. So Dan, how do you feel about all this Phytophthora in your peppers? Well, it happens. Too much rain. We've had um, two to three inches of rain every week since the middle of June. Normally we have in August, we have two inches of rain maybe in August. We must have had close to 15 inches of rain in August. So as you can see, Dan, he's not too keen on What's going on? Daniel, how do you feel about everything? It just makes everything harder when you're picking because now you got to pick through all the rotten stuff. And just to show you how bad it is, because we can't even take this uh, anywhere because we could cut off some of the sections, but the peppers rot from the inside out. And I'll just show you what we've had to do. To try and encourage our peppers to put on new growth, we've gone through and pulled off everything that has been bad, which that's a lot of peppers, and a lot of them are really nice size. But again, this is one of the struggles of vegetable farming. You heard Dad say it. 
Um, it's never really easy to harvest crops, and guess what? This is just something we're gonna have to deal with. Hopefully it does not affect the rest of our peppers the same way it has affected these bell peppers because we hate to see this. It hasn't been all bad news. We have been able to get almost our entire order picked, but a big issue when you're harvesting peppers like this and there's a lot of bad ones is you always stick your fingers through the bad ones. That's how you find them. Daniel, how many peppers have you stuck your finger in today? Probably at least eight. I've probably stuck my finger through like six or seven peppers. Mmm, yeah, it's gross. So to be 100% honest, that was a disappointing way to start off our day. But at least our peppers look really, really nice that we were able to find. They're just a little on the smaller side. Hopefully the peppers will continue to put on new growth and maybe the new growth won't suffer the same fate as the peppers that we had to pull off. And dad wanted me to show you that we have not had rain for quite some time and we still have sections where there is water laying in the field and it has definitely affected our plants that we have here. And it's easy to see that it is not good. It's very easy to see that. Now something we have to say is we do not like this at all. We hate this actually. And it can ruin your mood because we know there would be a lot of peppers to harvest in those rows if they never got that disease. But it's farming, things like this happen, and we have to look on to the next job and we have to keep thinking positive. And the positive thing I can think about this year is we've harvested a lot of peppers off those plants so far. And next year, we're gonna do it better. So in an effort to think more positively today, we're gonna move on to the tomatoes because the tomatoes, oh, they look good. We've been able to harvest many, many tomatoes so far this year, and a lot of canning tomatoes have gone out the door at the farm market. But we're definitely not even close to being finished with tomatoes for the year, so we need to get started picking. Oh yeah, look at these tomatoes. Tomatoes make everything better. What can I say? That's why I like picking them. They make everything better. Now really quickly, some of you may be curious if our tomatoes can get Phytophthora, and the answer is yes. On the other side of the field, it looks as if our tomatoes are actually dealing with that problem the same way our peppers are. But these rows are a little bit longer, and our tomatoes, thankfully, are only in a small section of wet field or field that doesn't drain well. So it's not gonna be near as big as a problem as it will be for the peppers. And a lot of people that watch the videos like to poke fun at all the rocks that we have in our soil. But if it wasn't for all the rocks that we have in our soil this year, um, we probably wouldn't have a crop of tomatoes and we wouldn't have a crop of peppers. Just from looking at the section where the peppers are, uh, there isn't near as many rocks as over here by the tomatoes. And it's evident by the way that the fields have just held the moisture in. Um, but these shaly, rocky fields that we have are the only reason these tomatoes and our crops over in this section of field look so nice. So it can be a pain to have a lot of rock sometimes, but it's saving our butt this year, that's for sure. What's pretty neat to see is that we've already gone through and picked these sections of tomatoes a few times. So by now, a bulk of the tomatoes have ripened up and we've picked through here quite often. And once we go through and pick today, there's not gonna be much left here, not many green tomatoes. Um, the type of tomatoes that we raise are determinate tomatoes. So they push on a bulk of their harvest at one time. And then once the bulk of that harvest is done, the plants basically die. So these determinate varieties that we're raising are really nice for us because it's not too long until frost gets here. But something that's really neat and I wanted to share with you is once we go through and pick today, once we have like a thorough picking, um, there's not gonna be many tomatoes left. So that's pretty cool. And it was very helpful early on that we went through and picked here. So that was just something that I wanted to mention and that's something that I think is pretty cool. Another thing that's pretty cool, well, I don't know if it's pretty cool, uh, my camera's overheating. So I don't know how much more filming I'm gonna be able to do out here with the tomatoes. The camera keeps shutting off because it's too hot. So if that is any inclination of how warm it is out here, then there you go. As long as the camera's shutting off and we're not shutting off, then I'm doing okay. Those are all rotten. Gross. Gross. 
Gross, gross. The camera has been sitting in the shade and it feels nice and cool now. So we can bring it out and show you we've made some progress. We've got beautiful plum and round here on the wagon. Dad and Daniel have been going up through the field picking the round tomatoes. I've been picking the plum and the round tomatoes that they have seen have been gorgeous. The size of some of these tomatoes is what blows me away. This tomato feels like it's almost two pounds and there's plenty of tomatoes that are large like that on each basket. And with what I'm working on, I'm just finding plenty of plum tomatoes too. Uh, once I got up off the hill, there wasn't too many bad ones. That little section right there is kind of a low spot. So there was water sitting there, which caused some of the tomatoes to rot out. But where I'm at right now, doesn't seem to be that big of an issue. I, will, I find them here and there, but now that I'm up on the hill, getting out of the little hole there, not a problem at all. We still had a few more baskets to fill up here, but we got a call that they're waiting for basil back at the farm market. And we didn't want to pick the basil early because, well, it's hot and you can't leave the basil out in the heat. So dad ran over to cut the basil and we're going to pick up the tomatoes. Well, if you were to ask me, I think this looks pretty good. We got our bell peppers on here and all of our tomatoes. Now, even though we sadly found out that a lot of our peppers are struggling with the disease, I think it's been a successful morning. This is what we wait for all year. Beautiful wagons full of produce. And I'm so happy that we're finally able to accomplish that. I don't know, dad, how you feeling about this heat today? Not liking it. It's been pretty rough. I don't know what to tell you, but um, yeah, it's gonna get warmer this afternoon. We got home at a perfect time because it is lunch. So what we're gonna do is head up, get something to drink, get something to eat, and then we'll sort and wash these tomatoes afterward. Alrighty, alrighty. It is now lunchtime on the farm. You would not believe what we're having for lunch. Tacos, yes, tacos on a Tuesday. Taco Tuesday, no Taco Thursday. But yeah, it's a Taco Tuesday. All finished with lunch. It was really good today. You gotta be careful on days where lunch is really good. Because well, if you eat too much lunch, that, that helps nobody, yeah. But anyway, uh, we gotta get these tomatoes ran through the washer and sorted. Altogether, we were able to get 28 baskets of tomatoes. We got 10 baskets of plum and 18 baskets of round. All the tomatoes were on the riper side, so we shouldn't have too many that are staying down here, which is a good thing because people have been picking them up. So we actually decided we wanna get our order taken care of first. So we need to run these green bell peppers through the washer and move them into boxes. Now, since these peppers are for an order, we really need to be careful as we go through them and make sure that we didn't miss any phytophthora as we were harvesting. And by washing them up, it makes them look really, really nice. And that is all we needed for the order of peppers. We got four bushel. That usually comes out to about eight baskets of peppers. When the peppers are larger, they do fit nicer in the box, but we're not selling them by piece. We're selling them by volume when they're in a box. So it doesn't really matter as to what size they are. We're doing what we always do with the plum and round tomatoes. We, we're sorting them on how ripe they are. So all the tomatoes that are ready to go for canning will go in one basket, and the ones that are not ready will go in another. All the tomatoes have now been ran through the washer. We only had about a basket and a half of tomatoes that weren't ready for canning. So that's not, per that's not too bad. That means the tomatoes are really ripening up. And now we're moving on to round. Guess what time it is? It's tomato time. <laughs> Let me tell you something about the cattle. They love tomatoes. Here you go, over here too. 
There you go, tomatoes, tomatoes. The only issue is we don't have too many tomatoes to feed. So you gotta space them out or some of the bigger cows just hog them all. But I think all of us can agree washing these tomatoes and sorting them sure does make them look nice. Now all we have to do is wait for dad to get down here with the side by side and then we can take these up top and get them unloaded. Keep coming, all right, right there. Up top we go. We couldn't even get all the tomatoes pulled off the wagon without people taking them. We sold two or three baskets right off the wagon. But that, that's good. We need to get rid of them. Afternoon has been pretty hot and humid here on the farm. We didn't get too much done beyond what you had seen. Uh, after we got finished with the tomatoes, we've just been working around the farm market here. Dad had to run and grab some sawdust, so he took care of that, and I was just helping the girls out wherever they needed it. And something you didn't see today was uh, Matthew was not here. Yeah, that's because Matthew was at the auction and he actually picked up some fall items. He was able to grab some beautiful pumpkins. Now we do have pumpkins growing, but or a little concern. They're still green. I mean, it, it's early. It's early, it's not technically pumpkin time yet, but people have been asking for them. Uh, they're still green, and because it's been so wet, we're worried they're gonna rot out. So we're starting to pick up some pumpkins uh, just so that we have them here for the customers. So we got these beautiful pumpkins right here. They're gonna be $8 a piece. Over here, we have some smaller pumpkins. These are $3. And then right here, these are six. And something that a lot of the people in the area really like are pumpkins that you can stack. And that's what we have along here. A few different types of stacking pumpkins. And then we were able to pick up some gourds as well, large ones and small ones. So that's where Matthew's been all day at the auction, trying to pick up some stuff for us. And uh, he did a pretty good job. Thank you, Matt. I will say the farm market looks much different this time of the year. We have all our fall items out. And if you weren't ready for fall to be here, well, don't come to the farm market because all the other customers are. So since the customers are getting ready, we gotta get ready. But I will say, it does look beautiful out here with all the pumpkins and the gourds and then the beautiful fall mums. I mean, it doesn't get much better than this. Farm market is now all closed, so that means we are done for the day and heading up to the house. Hey, I'm home. Check it out. What are we having for dinner tonight? Ooh, it looks like ham and bean soup. And what's wild is we have butter bread with our ham and bean soup, but sometimes we will have peanut butter and jelly on the table. So if anybody's feeling wild and wants a peanut butter and jelly too, we've got it. But since we're about to sit down and eat dinner, that means this is where we're gonna end the video today. I'd like to thank everyone for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye.